Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over pairs in C++. So pairs are used to group two elements together, and the two elements can be of different types. So this is known as heterogeneous types. For instance, you can pair a string with an int. And to use a pair, we need to include the library. So the library is called utility. And to declare a pair, we would do pair and we would need to specify the two types in the angle brackets. So for the pair, I will make it string and int, and let's use this to represent a student. So the variable, I'm just going to call it student. So we'll have two data types, which is a string and an int, and the string will be for the student's name, and the int will be for the student's age. And if we were not using namespace std, we would need to add the qualifiers, like so, std colon colon. And we would have to do the same for string. But since this is a beginner C++ course, I will use the namespace std. Okay, so we have a pair so far, and this pair is empty. So we need to assign it values. So what we can do is student.first. So first refers to the first typing, which is string. I will give the student a name. So let's put Kenny. And then for the second element, as you might have guessed, we have second. And this is an int, so we'll just put any number, 18. And then let's print out the values of the student. So I can do cout student.first and student.second. So let's run this. And you can see we get Kenny and 18. And pairs are nice for when you want to group two elements together. So in this case, if I want to have a vector of students, I would not have to create two different vectors, one for storing the students' names and the other for student ages because they're of different types. Instead, I can have a vector of pairs. So that's why you might want to use a pair. Now let's go over more of the syntax with pairs. So you can access the first element using first and the second element using second. And we can actually just initialize this using the constructor. So here I can just put in the values Kenny and 18 directly. And if I save and run the program, you can see we get Kenny 18. Now let's get rid of this. And let's say you just have the variable for a pair of string and int, and you don't have the value yet, and you want to assign the value later. Well, you can just do student is equal to pair. And in this case, we would have to specify the type, so string int, and we can just pass in the values. So Kenny and 18. And if I save and run the program, we get Kenny and 18. So this is the same constructor syntax. And if I took away this typing, and I try to run the program, you can see we get an error. And that is because we need to specify the types of the pair. And alternatively, you can just do make pair and you can pass in string and int like so. So this is a function that creates a pair from these two values. And so if I save and run the program, you can see we get Kenny and 18. So this is similar to the constructor syntax, except we add the word make underscore pair. But the difference is we can actually omit the typing. So if I save and run this, you can see it compiles and runs just fine. So if you use the constructor syntax, you need to specify the types, whereas if you use the make pair function, it will just inference the types based on the values you pass in. Now, if I change this to Kenny and Yip, and I save and run the program, you can see we get an error. And that is because earlier we declared student as a pair of string and int, yet we're making a pair of two strings, okay? So even though make pair allows you to ignore the typing, when it does the type inference, it would create a pair of two strings, okay? So that's using the constructor and the make pair function. Now let's talk about packing and unpacking. So you can pack a pair, and to do so, you can just put curly braces and put Kenny here and let's say 18 over here, and you have your two values over here. So we're packing these two values together inside the curly braces and assigning it to student, which is a pair of string and int. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get Kenny and 18. So this is called packing. And we can also unpack a pair. And unpacking is doing the opposite. So when you pack a pair, you are assigning it two values. And if you unpack it, you're getting the two values. So I can get each individual value and assign them to variables. And to do so, I would do auto. And I would put two variables here. So let's say name and age. And I would assign it student. So we are unpacking the two values from the student pair. And let's print out the values. So cout 
name and age. All right, so let's save and run the program. And you can see we get the same thing. The first print statement is from the pair itself, and the second one is from the name and age variable. And for those of you who are not familiar with the auto keyword, we went over this very early on in the series. Basically, it will do the type inference. So we don't have to specify the string type for name and int for age. It will handle that when we unpack the values from the pair. And as I mentioned earlier, a pair can be used to group two different types, but the types can also be the same. So in this case, I have two pairs and they represent a point on a map. So on an XY plane, we have two points and the first element is the X coordinate and the second element is the Y coordinate. So we can use a pair to represent a point on a two dimensional plane. And this can be used for if you're making a game, for example, where you have a two dimensional map. So let's say I want to create a function that would determine the distance between two points. So let's do int get distance. And I'll get a const reference of a pair. So this is going to be point one. And let's just copy and paste this. And this will be point two. So let's get the distance between these two points. And to do so, I'm going to include the CMath library. And if you want to know more about the CMath library, make sure you check the previous video where I go over useful math functions. So here we would use the distance formula. And to do so, I want to get the individual X and Y coordinates. And that's where the unpacking comes in. So I can do auto X1, Y1 is equal to P1 and auto X2, y2 is equal to p2. So over here, let's apply the distance formula. So return square root of pow x2 minus x1 to the power of 2 plus pow y2 minus y1 to the power of 2. And let's print out the results. So c out get distance of p1 and p2. All right, let's save and run the program. And you can see the distance between those two points is five. All right, so that's the pair in C++. Hopefully you understand how the pair works and how it can be useful to use a pair to combine two related elements together. And these two elements can be of different types or the same type. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.